The Secretary of the Army Corps of Engineers turned down a permit to complete the Dakota Access Pipeline and announced that it will seek an alternate route for the completion of the controversial project. Members of the Sioux Tribe in North Dakota have been joined by supporters from across the country in a protest that has lasted for months. The protesters are fighting against a pipeline that could be dangerous to the tribe and to the water supply to their nearby reservation. While this announcement is a huge step for the protesters, the future of the pipeline is uncertain in the face of the upcoming Donald Trump administration. Trump has said that he supports the completion of the pipeline and policy experts believe he and his administration may be able to reverse this decision. Additionally, Energy Transfer Partners and Sunoco Logistics Partners, the two corporations behind the pipeline, said on Sunday night that they, quote, fully expect to complete construction on the pipeline without any additional rerouting, end quote. Many Republicans are criticizing President Obama's support and effort to reroute the pipeline. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers were threatening arrest and removal of any protesters still on the campsite by Monday, December 5th, but later retracted that statement in the face of the rerouting announcement. Today, protesters are celebrating and preparing to continue to fight if need be. Sean, do you think this rerouting decision could change in the new Trump administration? Well, absolutely, because Trump has said that he does not want this to be rerouted and he agrees with the additional plan. I think it's something that they're really going to have to fight for if Trump, as well as some of these oil companies, want to have it work. So I think it's going to have a major impact. I agree, Sean. Definitely something to keep an eye on in the upcoming months. There's a lot going on in the U.S. and the world. And for that, we go to news correspondent Moses Small. Thanks, Sean and Claire. Let's take a look at the developing stories this morning. Donald Trump and Ben Carson had disagreements when they ran against each other in the primaries, but yesterday Trump appointed Carson to his cabinet. Ben Carson is going to lead the Department of Housing and Urban Development, which oversees low-cost government housing. In a recent interview with Fox News, he says that he's the best for the job because he was raised in, quote, inner-city housing. However, critics are concerned because he hasn't held office before and criticized programs exactly like this in the past. Despite these concerns and a rocky history with the department, members of the Trump administration are optimistic. You could smell smoke in the Boston Common on Sunday after a fire broke out in Cambridge. The fire damaged 15 buildings, three of which needed to be torn down as a result. It started on Saturday at about 3 p.m. and witnesses reported the last flames dying down at 3 a.m. the next morning. There were no deaths or serious injuries. And since then, the mayor of Cambridge started a campaign that raised over $200,000 to help the 48 families who were displaced. This is about halfway to the goal of $500,000. The Red Cross set up a shelter, but according to the Boston Fire Department, many slept at the homes of friends and family. Donations can still be sent to the fund online at the GoFundMe page of Mayor Denise Simmons. On the other side of the country, a second fire started this weekend. On Saturday, a party was taking place in a warehouse in Oakland, California, when a fire broke out, killing over 30 people. The fire supposedly started in the back of the warehouse with an electrical error. The exact cause is not known, but the building has exposed wood surfaces and a number of flaws in its electrical system. President Obama gave his condolences to those lost in the fire. Local authorities put the current death toll at 36 and identified 33 of the victims so far. A search is still underway to find anyone who might currently be trapped. Sunday night, there was a stabbing outside of Einstein's Bagels on Boylston Street. According to emails from Emerson College, a man wearing jeans and a hooded coat stabbed another man in front of the school at about 7.30 that night. The assailant then ran down Boylston Street towards the gardens, while the victim refused medical care and walked down to the Tufts Medical Center. This is one of a number of stabbings near Emerson College this year. The school has said that there is no threat to the community, and police are still looking to find a suspect. That's all I have for you today. Sean and Claire, back to you at the desk. Now, Moses, where you had said that this is not the first stabbing that's happened on Emerson campus this year, what is Emerson College and Emerson College Police doing to try to combat some of these issues? So what they're doing, to the best of my knowledge, is ramping up security and making sure that there's a lot of awareness just so that the police can respond if anything more does happen near the campus. All right, thank you so much, Moses. And now for today's weather forecast. Today will be mostly sunny with a high of 42 and a low of 37. The cold weather will continue into tomorrow and rain will come with it. Wednesday will be a high of 43 and a low of 34 with showers in the morning. The rain will taper off into the afternoon with a 40% chance of precipitation later in the day. The rain will completely go away for Thursday. Thursday will be cloudy with a high of 43 and a low of 29. 